Okay, guys, we'll make a start. Um, thank you for joining us tonight uh, as a part of our Blues From Home uh, webinar um, that we're, we're doing tonight. We've got uh, with us tonight Jody Prendergast, who is a accredited practicing dietitian. Um, she has her own business that she works in uh, JP Nutrition. You can find out more about her on jpnutrition.com.au. Uh, we're really lucky to have Jody here with us tonight as a, as a professional uh, in the field of, of dietetics. Um, she, she's a specialist on nutrition and um, nutrition for health, but also um, in, in performance and in, and in sport as well. So really lucky to have her on. It's just great to have a different voice um, and to have someone within the club from a different professional field willing to uh, give up their time to uh, jump on tonight and jump on tonight's um, staying healthy in lockdown Q&A. So I'm going to hand over to Jody. She's going to go through a couple of really important sort of topics that she'd like to focus on to discuss first, and, and then we're going to jump into some Q&A. So thanks again, Jody, for joining us tonight. Over to you. Wonderful. Thank you, Jared. Um, so... Oh, those people in the weight room, do you just let them in, Jerry? Yeah, I'll let them in. Yep, I'll keep an eye on that. Excellent. Um, basically, I'm only going to speak for a brief period of time just to give you some uh, tips and hints on how to survive in lockdown. Um, I can help you with the food part, the homeschooling and mental health. <laughs> I would love advice on that too, please. Um, I have three boys running around, so I have warned them to be quiet. If you hear bangs and crashes, I apologise. Um, basically, it, we're in a very strange situation, but the way um, I like to look at it, and I kind of get sick of people saying, you know, this is the new normal, adapt to the new normal. I don't want to accept it as the new normal because that means that this is what we're stuck with forever. I, the way I look at it is this is just a different period of time and how do we cope with this period of time? Um, accepting it, I guess, because we can't change it, but not letting it consume you or get you down that this is the way it's going to be forever because it won't be. So uh, as I click through, basically this is my top tips for staying healthy at home. Now, um, being a dietitian, we do talk about food, obviously, as the main part of our advice, but we also talk a lot about lifestyle because the two go hand in hand in together. So good food comes from good preparation. So basically my top tip is schedule your life. Now, people who know me know that I am a bit of a list maker, control freak, schedule organizer. But one thing I found in, especially in this, either, either when you're super busy, you need to schedule and plan, but in this environment, it actually helps as well. Because as I was saying, we've had our normal lives sort of ripped away from underneath us. And that can cause you to fall into a bit of a heap, especially if you don't know what to do now. You, you, you're not busy anymore. You don't have the same schedules that sort of kept you going from Monday to Friday and during the weekend. So I say write a schedule. Your blue stuff is great because it actually gives us a schedule to do each day and something to plan to look ahead to at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, I've got this going on. And even if you write down, like, I don't know, those of you who had multiple kids doing lots of training probably had their schedule sorted out, do something similar to that. So create your routine. Create for your kids that, you know, homeschooling is from 8.30 to 1.30 because let's be honest, unless they're in high school and got a proper schedule, they're not sitting at their desk from 8.30 to 3.30. Get their plan happening, schedule in their, their breaks, schedule in their morning teas, schedule in their afternoon teas, plan their activities. At three o'clock, you're going to go out and shoot some hoops, you know, at that sort of thing. So the kids and yourself know what you're looking forward to during the day. You're not just getting up and rolling into another day of being stuck at home. You're getting up and you've got, right, at 8.30, I'm doing this. At 9.30, I'm doing this. And it sounds controlling, but it actually 
is healthy to have something to look forward to and strive to. Even if it is at 9.30, it's morning tea and the kids go, great, I'll stop now and I'll go and get whatever I'm going to have for morning tea. It gives, it just gives you something to plan and look forward to. And within that, the biggest thing is planning your meals for the week. Some of you would have done it anyway, because if you were like me, you had an hour on a Sunday to get everything organized for the week and you did your online shopping and you click and collect and had your meals planned because you, you only had, you know, half an hour each night to get dinner on the table. Now we've got more time, but it's actually, that can make us fall into a trap of sitting on the couch and going, oh, whatever's in the cupboard will do because you think I don't need to plan because I've got so much more time where in essence, it, it should almost be the opposite that you have all your meals planned out. So you're not left sitting on the couch going, I'll oh, stuff it. I'll just order pizza tonight. It can be really helpful for the, the kids as well. So if they're doing homeschooling, you know, they know that almost, and I've been tempted to do this for myself because my kids don't stop eating is actually on the school day almost packing a, a lunchbox for them so that they've got they've had their breakfast whatever that might be and they've got their morning tea and lunch and snack with them because if they're anything like my boys they'll just keep going back to the cupboard every five minutes and pulling out something whereas if they know that that's their little meal for today you've got a you've got a good idea that they're having decent food rather than going grabbing at it for the of the, the cupboard. Um, the one of the beauties of having more time is you can actually experiment with your meals. So those dinners you always wanted to try, try them now. Doesn't matter if the kids aren't going to like them. Give them give them a go. Pick the bits out that they will won't like. You've got more time to have them throw it back at you and have arguments, which is always fun. But um, you actually then, um, you can try a few more things because we do have the luxury of time on our hands at the moment. Um, but again, in that sit down on a Sunday, do your meal prep, plan out your meals that you're going to have. So, you know, on Monday night, we've got this, Tuesday night, we've got this, Thursday night, we've got this, and it's all ready to go and you've got all the ingredients. So that's what you're going to have save save a, a treat night whether um in our house friday nights generally take away night and it's uh wh when they can have lollies in front of a movie or something that um is more so now because we're not disappearing on a friday night to a blues game somewhere so we've made that being stuck at home kind of like the fun treat night and that gives them something to look forward to at the end of the week as well. Um, so it's yeah, planning, planning and scheduling life to, to a degree that it gives you some structure back into the life that doesn't have a lot of structure in at the moment, I think is very important for your mental health. And it gives you a chance to um, work out well what you're eating. Now on that, it, um, one thing, it's, it's important to do all the boring stuff like have two pieces of fruit, have five veggies, have um, you know, as less process as possible and plan your meals around fresh food. We don't have to hoard yet, so we're not stuck having everything um, pre-packaged. We've actually got the luxury fresh food is readily available, so definitely use that. Um, one thing you can do if you don't go to the supermarket too often is get your frozen veggies. They're pretty much as good as fresh veggies because they're snap chilled. And even if you're desperate, some canned veggies. But use use um, variety in your meals. And again, because you're not racing off to football, basketball training, sit down with the family and get the kids to try some different foods. Use this time now. You'll have some meals that they'll hate, but you might find there's a couple of extras that you didn't want to try because you couldn't be bothered with the hassle of it that they might like that you can use when we're, we're back to normal. Now, within those foods, there's a problem with um, being isolated and that is the tendency to sit around more 
and eat more, whether that's just because we're bored or whether we're eating our stress and eating our emotions. Um, and the two going together, I won't talk about drinking because these kids shouldn't be doing that anyway, but the adults definitely uh, can be medicating a little bit with that. The problem with that is we are burning a lot less energy. And um, I must admit, I didn't even realise how much until we went back to training just recently and my eight-year-old had DOMS the day after his first training, which he's, he said, Mum, my legs are sore. And I went, oh, my God, you've got DOMS. You shouldn't have them as an eight-year-old, even an active eight-year-old. But it just shows how little they really were moving compared to what they do normally with, with training and school and things like that. So it's just really important for adults and kids to watch what you're eating in the sense that it, we've, it will be very easy to overeat. So again, if you've scheduled what your, your meals and your, plan, your planning, even if you've scheduled breakfast, lunch and dinner, you can keep a better eye on that, but something to be quite wary of. With um, a way to look at it is with uh, athletes generally, on their intense high training days, they will have uh, more carbohydrates to get them through their training sessions. On their non-training days, they tend to reduce the carbohydrates and increase the protein, basically because you need those carbohydrates to exercise. So these kids um, need it to exercise and run around and adults, of course, but we're just not moving as much when we're all stuck at home. The beauty of the protein is it will keep them filled up a bit more so making sure they've got some protein in at lunch breakfast and dinner just to fill them up reduce those excess carbohydrates and especially those refined ones so watch the treats and the lollies and it's tempting when they're miserable homeschooling to give them a treat but try to treat treat it like a normal school day if you can and again save it for later in the week when they've been behaving well um, or something like that. And yeah, if, if they're going out running around and doing big runs around the block, sure, give them the carbohydrates, give them the big pasta meals. If they're sitting around a bit more, just watch those extra carbohydrates and fill them up with their protein and their, their veggies and uh, a couple of pieces of fruit a day just to uh, keep those calories down without, you know, reducing their food intake. Um, basically, that's that. The other thing is a great time to have a pedometer if you've got it, just to keep, um, if you've got three competitive little boys like me, the best way to get them moving is to create a competition. And they will, if you say, oh, your brother's done more, you can guarantee they'll be running around for a few more, a few more laps to try to beat their brothers. So keep them moving as much as possible just to um and for adults as well get out and go for a walk just for your mental health and to you know if you're actually walking you can eat at the same time but you normally don't eat at the same time so it's another another bit of time that you won't be eating and it's um good for your mental health too it's the same with uh a lot of a lot of um people uh, I can be a little bit guilty of medicating with alcohol because, you know, hey, I can't go out anymore and it's we're stuck at home and, and our routine is gone. So just be aware that if you start to feel like that, you, you, you're better off getting out and going for a walk and playing a game with the kids or something just to distract yourself for a while and, and get um, some activity at the same time. Um, now, there'll be time for questions at the end because I'm rice, running over things, but just to give you a vague idea, the, we had a couple of questions put in. Do you want me to go yeah, through them, yeah. Jared? Or? Um, yeah, you can read through them or I can just pose them as I, I sort of uh, I, I sort of put them together. There was a few that were similar. Yeah. One question come in uh, regarding what to eat um, sort of a couple of hours before the game. Yep. Um, one parent was sort of concerned, obviously the popular sort of answer or sorry, the popular 
option to go to is usually something carbohydrate based, but it doesn't work for everyone. Um, we know that, you know, carbohydrates are important, but um, what would you suggest if say that person's child was to work better off of, of protein based or something that was po protein yeah. sort of dense? Yeah. The old, the old typical advice was, and it was, um, you know, two hours before you, your carbohydrate past the type meal and then half an hour before a snack as well. But two hours is often not long enough. And if, if, and everybody is individual, some, some kids will, will, will devour that or, you know, five bowls of cereal and they'll be happy with that and others won't. Basically it's what works for you. The only thing, um, and the one who said my son's better off with protein, eggs and chicken, that's perfectly fine as long as it is at least a couple of hours beforehand. And as if, and as if, and also if there's some carbohydrate with it, because particularly for a game and a game like basketball where it's, it's short and fast, you, your body will burn carbohydrates fuel. So that's your first, your first go-to is carbohydrates. And if you don't have enough in your muscles and you haven't eaten enough, you just won't have the energy you need to get through the game. And all the research is showing, yes, we can use fat and things like that but not so much on the game day, not so much in a fast game like basketball. So I would have the eggs, have the chicken, put a little bit of bread, rice or pasta with it, a small amount that's tolerable, and then something that happened before, carbohydrate based, maybe like a muesli bar or something like that. And again, it depends on if you didn't have much that run. If you've had decent meals throughout the day and the night before, they're not going to need... Um, really structured meals if they're eating well if they haven't drunk enough water the day before as well as that day and you know eating sort of scra scrappy then definitely going to have less energy one of the things that really will you know reduce their energy in a game is actually their hydration and it's not just waking up in the morning going i've got to drink all day today it's actually from the day before as well so um, a lot of people forget about that. They get stuck on their protein and carbohydrates and forget that dehydration is the quickest way to slow down. So that is probably more important than if the kid wants to eat eggs and chicken, let them do that. As long as they don't feel full by the time they're playing, that's not a problem at all. Excellent. Uh, yeah. Uh, another popular one, uh, probably, you know, Gatorade or sports drinks, I guess. You know, yep. um, Powerade, we're sponsored by Powerade, so I should say Powerade. Yeah. I should have Excellent. changed that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. at, at a game, is, is, is that more sort of advisable or is water best or where do you, where do those three drinks, I guess, um, mentioned there fit yep. um, in, in your, like, what would you advise? Like energy drinks, water, Gatorade, what, what would you be sort of advising? So sponsored by Powerade, definitely the best. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, really, actually, Powerade and Gatorade are kind of interchangeable. They're, they're both pretty good. Water is obviously the best. And again, it will really depend on if how, in summer and it, a sweaty person in summer is going to benefit a lot more from a Gatorade or a Powerade than um a kid that doesn't sweat at all and is running around in a winter game and doesn't get as hot. So it's environmental too. Like some of those in, in summer, some of the basketball stadiums are stinking hot. So even the parents could do with a Gatorade, I think sometimes in there, but it um, that's when it's more beneficial. It It's not bad. It's not necessary to drink as much as actually kids do because to be honest and what they've found is the acidity of these sports drinks is actually like them drinking soft drink. So a lot of kids, you know, the parents say, you can't have the soft drink, but here you go, have a Gatorade or a Powerade because it's good for you. It's, it's designed to be drunk during a sports game for that particular purpose, not just for drinking. So when I say it's fine to have, it's fine to have during sport. Don't just drink it any old time. It waters best, you know, 99% of the time. Gatorade can be of some benefit, especially, um, sort of, you know, your half time to after the game of 
a hot, sweaty running around game where they've been sweating a lot because it does replace your electrolytes quite well, does have some carb carbohydrate in it. You can also get um, carbohydrate free versions now, whether it's basically just electrolytes of both these things. So that can be really handy when you're sweaty too, because if you're sweating a lot, water actually isn't going to cut it when you lose those electrolytes. Uh, one lot, like, and I say one container of your Gatorade Powerade will be enough to, to get it back and then top yourself up with water as well. Playing a game today, you probably wouldn't need it. But again, a summer day, a game when you're sweaty and hot, and you're going to lose a lot of electrolytes because that's basically it. It's replacing the electrolytes you lose in your sweat. And yep. if you lose too much, it's very hard to hydrate up properly again with water. Yep. And that's what it was designed to do. So, yeah, for that purpose, great. But not just not necessary, especially not necessary for training or anything like that. Yep. No, that's perfect. And we had a question come through really quickly. What about coconut water? It, um, coconut water is, people love it because it's like a natural electrolyte drink. And it's fine and it's good. It can be, um, it has a few um, medium chain triglycerides in it as well, which anybody who's doing keto stuff will understand, um, which is fine. It's, the problem with the coconut water is it can be very expensive too. So again, if you want to drink that instead of a Gatorade during a game, I'll go for it. Not a problem at all because it does have some natural carbohydrates as well. But as, as they were trying to sell the coconut water as a lovely hydration drink to drink all day long and all night long, it's not necessary for that purpose. Water just as, just as good. Yep. Oh, perfect. Um, and our last question came in, which is a really interesting one. Um, mm -hmm one of our parents was interested in finding out about a diet to potentially uh, increase strength and, and muscle mass in a, in a, say a 12 year old boy, but in one of our, our younger uh, players, I guess. Yeah. And, and this is an area we get questions about this quite a bit. And obviously I have a strength and 